What is going on, everybody? Bobby Five, my man, Eric Sheets Aver. We are here to talk through the Honda Classic. Uh, we don't have the same star-studded event like we did last week, and we do have a guy who was somehow on a week where, where I even had a good number of six of sixes. Sheets managed to win a tournament with a five of six. I actually had a five of six that almost won the $33, finished fifth. And I, but I had Homa and Rom in that lineup, and you had you somehow without Homa or Rom, neither <laughs> put together a lineup that with a with a five of six that 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 won the won the won the single entry. I had a really good golf week as well. I was top, I had two top ten lineups in the eighty eight. I had um, wow. I had I, I, I had a bunch of top high finishes. I was on the for once the good side, as you mentioned with Morikawa. We were talking pre show. That last right. birdie by Morikawa put me in. It crossed me with a with a. I believe it was a four or six. It was either three or six or four or six in the uh, in the eight eighty eight that that got me cash, which is a big fifteen hundred dollars swing. So I'm ready to get after golf again. I'm getting excited about about what's coming up. It was fun to see Tiger, you know, playing really well at times and enjoying that. So uh, so yeah, I'm ready to get into it. Uh, not not to not to mention that your pick to win the whole tournament was right there. Obviously, the, yeah, the, uh, the Homa and, and I and I, did, I did end up making a very small bet on him, and it was 35 to one actually, which is crazy that I was able, that we were able to get it. But then when I tried to bet more at 35 to one, it was 20 to one. So I didn't understand uh, how that worked exactly. Um, but it was different friends that was betting through different sites. Anyway, with all that said, it's it's not as star studded of an event. We don't have you know. Uh, a lot of like, there's going to be like guys who are really, really heavily owned just because their names in these things. So I guess if, if, if there's a first look thing that I would say, I would say, look, I, you know, it's hard not to like Sung JM and you know, Aaron Wise here and get things like that. But at the same time, we have like, it's going to be really concentrated ownership for a golf tournament. Like you might see guys 50% owned, which just is a little bit crazy for a golf tournament, in my opinion. Um, that was my first thought. What are, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, my, my thoughts on these tournaments, the uh, where you know the the stars just kind of sit, is 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 this. So the way DraftKings salary works is they have to put some guys in the ten k, some guys in the nine, some guys in the eight, some in the seven. Right? The, the bet doesn't matter who's who's there. I mean, who's playing? That that's the way salary works, which makes which makes some sense. Um, but, what, but what I find in these types of tournaments is that is that you have a, this gap in salary between guys that in other weeks would be almost the same sum. Mm -hmm. Like you get, you have guys that are like eight, nine K, for example, that if, if it was at the masters, for example, they would both be seven, they would all be 72. You know? Right. Um, and so I, it's not that DraftKings is like mispricing it on purpose. I mean, they have to like spread it out in this way, but I feel that I, I, Listen, I feel as though that's where the value should be is just realizing that there's not that much difference between the, the between these guys. You know, like if, if you had one like superstar up here, like let's say that Rom was playing in this tournament, like you could put him at 12K. You know what I mean? Oh, and that, maybe even 13. Yeah. Yeah. And it would be worth it. You know, well, 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 it would at least be justifiable. Right. Because right. there was that big of a gap between him and say. Uh, Sun JM, for example, I don't. Know, but 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 to say that Sun JM at, is you know two thousand more than posted, like for example, you know what I mean? Like it just seems as though you should be able to like take advantage of that. But then what's weird is that when you run the projections, and we'll get to this, mm -hmm. like this is what you're getting. You're getting like forty percent, fifty percent sun jm and it just does, it just feels wrong for some reason but well i guess we'll just go through it tier by tier. you want to tier by tier yeah. and just and then we'll, then we'll do it you want to just you want to just take care of the top two guys first i guess yeah let's do that and i just want to throw out something for anybody who hasn't watched it yet watch full swing on netflix they did a special the same people who did the formula one thing they did it about the golf tour it's unreal i went through the eight episodes and my lack of sleep over the last few days and literally was just, uh, it's just so, so great to watch, especially if you, if you play DFS golf or if you like golf at all, it's, it's pretty great. Nice. Um, anyway, so throwing that out there. So, so with the top two guys, look, I prefer Sung Jay. I like both of them. Fun. Like they both make sense if you want, if you need to spend your money, but it just comes down to like how, you know, if Sung Jay had 50% ownership, I'm definitely going to want to be below any golfer at 50% at any time. I just don't think that's going to, that's going to work for me. Maybe he doesn't end up quite 50%, but I think it's going to be pretty close. And I think that Lowry's going to end up in probably half that, maybe a little less than half that. So I'm okay with trying to find lineups that don't have these guys. But the problem is they, you know, in terms of being like the quality of golfers, they are significantly better golfers than everybody else in this field. Um, what are you doing with these guys? And, and we talked to, you know, you talk a little bit about your, your general thoughts on it. 
But these are two guys who would be, they wouldn't be this high price, but they would be high price compared to the guy, other guys in the field, no matter what, on any slate. Well, I want to talk about this another way, you know, um, that we talked about my lineups this past week that you didn't, you know, you didn't need, I didn't need to have the winners to, to, to win the tournament. But I will say this, that, that if you wanted to, like, if you do play the top guys, I mean, you at least have to start usually, I think, by winning the tournament, you know, like, and, and I mean, I could argue, I don't know whether it's just, this is bias or even racism in a weird way, but like, it just feels as though Sun JM is just not a winner. You know what I mean? It's, it just feels as though he's kind of, he's, you know, he's steady. He's, he's, he's does his thing. He, when he finishes, when he plays well, he comes in seventh, you know, when he doesn't play well, he comes in 40th. Now, again, this is in, 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 in tougher fields, but I just get this, 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 this weird feeling that he's just not a guy that's just going to, first of all, there's in, in my, you know, forget the projections. I just don't see him winning by five strokes like ever. You right. Know? Um, and whenever I need him to make a 12 foot putt, he doesn't make it, you know, like, it's just like one of these guys that, that I'd rather play at 7,700 in the masters than, than 10, seven in, 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 in this thing. Okay. Um, so I'm, I mean, this, I'm probably going to be a sucker for this. I'll, I'll probably end up just, just not playing either of them. I mean, just on principle in, in my, in my, in my big buy-ins and I'll probably end up forcing them out, uh, uh, not out completely, but I'll probably end up re restricting my ownership somewhat. And again, there's no, there's no real math justification because when I run these things, you get all these guys, you know, but remember it's, it's, it's not the median that you want. You want those ceilings. And, and, you know, I think that M's median is kind of like, a, a, it's like a median. You know what I mean? I, I don't see that big, huge range of outcomes that, that I need from guys, you know, in, in DFS that much, you know, when I need them to win to 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 get it done so that's just my opinion uh and I'll, it'll probably cost me but that's that's yeah opinion. but but i also think like talking generally like that we've brought, we brought this up before it's very strange that this has happened three times that john rom has won he has not been on uh the the winning lineups that he right. won the tournament right. so it just goes to show you and, and, and some of those are bigger tournaments with stronger fields so you couldn't physically price the guys in together so it sort of made a little bit of sense but it just goes, I mean, you're not getting that many extra points for first, but what you are getting is the, that you played the, you know, you're, you're probably going to have the most points if you win the tournament. But right. even that, John Ram, won, he won a tournament and he had the fourth most points one of the one of the times because the the right. Eagle stuff and all that stuff. Yeah. So it just is interesting to think about from a, from a strategy perspective, may, maybe fading some of these top guys on these types of slates when you think about that kind of thing. So I kind of, kind of agree a little bit that, that you're going to get. Hang on, you got to pause. Yeah, just I'll pause it. Anyway, so yeah, so just uh, I, do, I do like the strategy of sort of dropping down because I think what you're going to see is outside of Aaron Wise and maybe Denny McCarthy, the next tier, you're going to see a lot less ownership on on these guys. Although maybe a little bit more now that Alex Norring withdrew. Um, so so so, so Lee, going to the nine Ks then, and if I had like, the way I look at it, I have M slightly ahead of, of of Lowry. I'll probably play more Lowry than M just because of the ownership. That's the way I'm, I'm looking I agree at it. with that. I agree with that assessment. What do you think of the 9K range? Who are the guys you're, you're heaviest on here? So Aaron wow. Wise rates to be the best play, um, as he tends to be. Um, I have him currently at 22% ownership. As usual, Aaron Wise usually is owned more than that I project. So I'm projecting it's going to – I think it's going to be a little bit more than that. But there there are guys in here that you can, that you can talk about. So the – the hot guys that people like to play, are, first of all, are, are Thomas Dietrich. So, so nine K Thomas Dietrich, I think he's going to get ownership, and and I have him rated okay, but not like not like a smash play or anything like that. Um, I think that Kucher again is is it, it just feels like a guy that's just not going to be top five. I mean, I don't know, like or he he's he's I'd rather play him cheaper in tougher tournaments, like like we could have this past week actually. You know yeah, what I mean? he played great. Yeah. Um, I will say because of the way this course is, I mean, there's like water all over the goddamn place here, mm -hmm. you know, so, so you do want to, to you don't, you don't want to be, 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 you don't want guys spraying it all over the place mm -hmm. okay? when, you're, when you're, when you, when you need good stuff. So, but I, I don't, I don't think Kuchar is that great. The, the guy who's also getting quite a bit of a buzz is, is the Minwoo Lee. Um he is he he projects to be my second favorite of the of the nine k's i just again just kind of kind of i'm afraid that that he's gonna get 
a little bit 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 too owned. And then not not to not to shit on the whole the whole range, but but Denny McCarthy kind of feels similar, you know, like in in that you know he's. I'll, I'll, this, this is what I'll say about Denny McCarthy. Okay, I, I do like the Denny McCarthy play because I think there's some some kind of bias that be, that because he's a great putter that he's bad at everything else. You know, people are like, well, Denny McCarthy, he can't really do much, but he's a great putter. You know, he's actually been striking the ball really well. Okay, right. so, so I think of the nine K guys that people are going to get used to playing. I think maybe Danny McCarthy has more upside than people, people, people kind of think. The guys that are going to be, I think, the low owned guys in the range are the guys you don't want to pay for. That being Kirk and Horschel. Okay, right. so so, and you know what it scares me too. Right. <laughs> it scares me too to pay that much. So I'm I'm kind of struggling here with what I'm going to be doing in my in my big buy-ins. Um, if I'm going to play the nine case, I'll probably end up playing the best play, being wise. And then probably my next best uh, maybe would be Danny McCarthy. Not that there's anything wrong with these others, but um, that, that, that's my opinion on the night. Yeah, I mean, what was Billy Horschel, 7,400 last week? I know it's definitely right. different, but in, in unowned, and now you get popular Billy Horschel at 9,700 because the, it's just a very strange thing. He's in terrible form. Like, it's just – so there's a lot of guys in the 9K range that I would consider, especially if I'm going to fade the top, K, top, top guys. But my favorites are Wise and McCarthy, just – Oh, wow. That's awesome. Okay. All things being equal. Like I, those are the two that I have the most interest in. I actually do like Kuchar. Um, and I think that he's, he's interesting. I, I wasn't, I, I wasn't as on the Min Woo Lee thing, but I'm sort of open to he and D Like I didn't, I didn't have them as high as the other guys. And then I'm just trying to decide what to do with the, because of how bad Horschel's looked and the fact that it'll have some ownership. I'm, I'm kind of struggling with that one, but he would be a guy I would normally want to play. I would say that he's as good, you know, he's going to bet to have a shot at this thing as anybody does. So he and Kirk are the two I'm sort of leaving out at the moment, but I might revisit that later on. Um, Wise and McCarthy, though, definitely stand out as my two favorites. Um, dropping down into the 8K range, she's start us off here because you're going to have, again, like everybody's double digit owned. You're going to end up with nobody owned at the bottom. And again, I'm going to force some of these weird plays in. And I'm just going to, I'll just throw out one thing. I, I would like a little bit of a credit because you said, we, we both deserve a little bit. You, you, you mentioned Hoagie as one of your favorite players value plays last week which i which was awesome an unbelievable play would have would have won me i would have won me some tournaments if i had him instead of a 1v1 with a taylor montgomery or something like that um or you know whatever because he ended up missing the cut alex, alex noran noran and montgomery they both missed right. the cut yeah this, but um but but uh the other one the one i had if i ended up with 25 percent of last week at, at 0.2 percent ownership was adam svensson who had a terrific tournament I just like these Canadian guys, and they, they, it seems like every week you get a top a top five out of, out of all of these guys. So um, I'm a, I have a little interest in Adam Svensson is, is the first thing I was going to say. But who, who are you looking at in this range? Yeah, Adam Svensson is great. Adam Svensson is a perfect example of – this is something I, I just kind of – I don't want to tilt about at DFS, but but whatever it is. So Adam Svensson was, was like 0.2% owned or something like that. Apparently the entire DFS community played him. Like, like if, you, if you like – like after the fact, like you go to all the contact providers. Oh, aren't you glad we gave you Adam Spencer? Aren't we glad we were all over Adam Spencer? Everybody's all over Adam Spencer, and yet somehow he was only point two percent on. You know what I mean? It just it just happens all the time. It's so it's so so. It's I wasn't trying to take. I really did play him twenty five percent. I know that we talked okay. about this. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that's why you go back to the, that's why you go back to the footage, right? I mean, it's, it's right. Like, and other guys show the show the picture of the one lineup out of one fifty that he was in and say, yeah, "See, exactly. I told you to play Adam Spencer." <laughs> Exactly. Um, so, so here's the deal with the AKs again. So again, I've been kind of thinking about this from a, from a bias and ownership standpoint. So the two guys that are going to get, they're going to get played um, are going to be Jonathan Vegas. Um, and he's coming off a good performance. Makes sense. And, and this Adrian Moronk, who I didn't, I haven't really, you know, done just did ran the projections and he shows to be a play. And, and when you look at the, at the industry, like everybody just loves Adrian Moronk. I, I re- literally have no idea who he is. So I think these are the guys that are going to get some are going to get someone on. I got two guys for you now. One I, I want to give, I want to give a give a shout out to to Rick to Rick Rungood for this one. He didn't even talk about the play really, but I was screwing around with this site a little bit, running like custom models and running simulations. And when I did it, this this guy just kept on just kind of popping as 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 showing up. And we played him like like recently. Um, and I want to bring him up, and that would be JT Poston. Mm-hmm. Um, at 8,800. Now it's not like he's going to be no, no owned. I still have him like double digits, but, 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 but that's one thing I wanted to mention. 
And the other guy, again, if you wanted, we talked about my medians versus guys with upside. In, in, in a weak field, um, I'll, I'll give you a guy who's going to probably hit like nine balls in the water and miss the cut or worse. Make the cut, he'll be like fifth going into like round four and then hit nine balls in the water and, and <laughs> ruin your life. But I'm gonna give out Cameron Davis at 8100. I knew I 100% knew who you were gonna say. I swear. That's so funny. We, uh, we, haven't, we haven't played him in like a long time. I think. Um, no, we got, you know I ended up throwing him into a couple last week because some of Rick's models kind of liked him and it kind of talked me into a couple of plays, both of them. It didn't work. Oh but, yeah. But I but but I, but, I, but I'm okay on the Cameron Davis. I thought about him a little bit. Yeah. Um, I Vegas is my favorite in this range, and it's it, by a pretty good margin. I understand he's popular, but just just looking at my picks. My way of getting a little bit different in this range is I actually think both Zadenhut and Straka have have the like this is the kind of tournament I could see these guys winning and they're gonna Did be Straka win this last year. I don't know if he I gotta double check who won it last year. Okay. I don't know. Um but but I but I do like these guys quite a bit. Um and 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 it's interesting to me that no one wants to play Harris English. He looked pretty good last week. What, what's our what's our issue with Harris English? Yeah, so so I I was hearing a little bit about the Harris English, and I have no English, I have no issue with him except that he's on my on my on my don't play list, and he he withdrew with the bad back with me for like like two weeks in a row, so I just don't. Yeah. play him. I have no reason not to play him. The old, uh, Paul, the, old the old Paul Casey thing, something like that, you know. So so I, I I have no reason not to play him. And like these guys, these guys come in and out of form, and he's obviously playing better now. So I I I have I have uh I have no issue with it. The other guy, by the way, who's um. Uh, two guys, one guy you met, you did mention Svensson. I don't have him rated all that high, and I have it fifteen percent owned. So, so this is a perfect opportunity to not play him after you know after, you, after you, did well with him, you did well with him at one percent, which is great. And and so we'll just bank that. Um, we'll bank those Sklansky bucks. I guess is the best better way to put it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and and Pendrith is probably going to be chalky too, but uh, and I don't have him rated that high either. So um, I guess I would say that of the chalky guys, I agree with you. I think I think Vegas is the best play. And then, um, and then maybe maybe no, Straka did win this last year. By the way, you're, you're right. That? He Straka did. did win this last year. Yeah, uh, okay. and the Moronk, uh, and the Moronk, Maybe it won't be as popular. Maybe I'll just blindly play the the the, the model guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. This is. I think this range. If, if there's one thing from all that we've said, I think it, this is a range that I probably will be heaviest focus on. So I'm going to be spreading it out. But I like the Poston idea. I like Vegas a lot. I like the Straka and Bezaden hood. It is weird. Struck after winning this tournament last year and would just be 8,500 and unowned. That doesn't seem like it makes a lot of sense. Do you think people just, you know, because I think, I think, it, I think it was even less owned last year. Yeah. And, and for what it's worth, you know, to some Jay won it three years ago, um, finished eighth a couple of years ago, but then finally missed the cut last year. He's, he's always been very good at this tournament just to go back to why people are going to talk themselves into some Jay and the fact that he's the best golfer in the field, probably. Um, all right, down in the 7K ranges, and we're getting into guys, we, you know, the Moronk you mentioned I need to dig a little further on, and another guy I need to dig a little further on is Ben Griffin. They're not guys I'm as familiar with, and I'm, I'm just, I just need to do a little digging. Uh, I, I will tell you the guy who, who was, who at times threatened and, and probably would have made the difference if I was going to win the $88 or if I was going to win one of the other single entries. I think it was the, the other 33 that single entry I had two different ones that I was way up there on. But uh, Steven Yeager was, was looking really good for a while and then just sort of had a dud of a fourth round. But he, you know, he got to six under real quick, and then looked like he was on his way to to making something happen. But I, I really like Jaeger here. Um, I really, I, I really like, uh, I like Aaron Rye at low ownership. I like Justin Sue at low ownership. Um, I'm kind of confused by the Benny on over love, and I love Will Gordon. So between, I guess between seventy five and eight hundred and eight K, those are my guys. Um, I also think Bramlett is going to make some of my lineups as well. Okay, uh, so this is. We're going to talk about the industry, I guess, a little bit. So first, first, I'll, first, I'll talk about uh, first, I'll talk about Will Gordon since you brought him up. So Will Gordon, he's a guy that was popping on one particular model for like weeks, like, and it was I, I emailed the guy and I'm like, listen, dude, this Will Gordon projection is ridiculous. You're like a huge outlier to the rest of the industry. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what to tell you, right? He hasn't actually popped yet, but when I see that happen, these guys always end up getting there eventually. You know what I mean? Uh, the example last year was actually Keegan Bradley. There was Keegan Bradley who was just, no, he was doing nothing. And all of a sudden he showed up in some freaking model. And I'm like, who? Like him? And then like, I'm not and then next thing you know, he like won some tournament or something like that. So I, I don't know what's the reason for, I don't know what, maybe some of the models like just see changes in somebody's stats or something. It may, means something. So that's the thing about the Will Gordon and uh, yeah, he'll be owned, but whatever. You are going to have to play these guys if you want to play Sun J.M. 
know what I mean? You're going to have to play these guys if you want to play multiple 9K guys, you know? So, mm -hmm. so you have to figure these out. The Bramlett thing obviously concerns me because he's such a long hitter that, you know, the water in play just, you know, it could be, it could be annoying at, 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 at double digit ownership, but he, he rates well. So I'll give you a couple of guys. Now, before I get to the guys I want to give you here, here's the, the industry, like, like head scratcher of the week. Right. So you might recall maybe like, uh, maybe a year or two ago, there was a tournament kind of like this where Steve Stricker was like showing up for me as like the third best player on like the whole slate. Okay. He was coming in and, and he was coming in at like 15% ownership. And I'm like, it makes no sense. Right. I mean, he's like a hundred years old. He has no shot to do it. And I played him and he ended up like barely making the cut or whatever. For, for whatever reason, Patrick Harrington, is showing up as okay. He's showing up as a good point per dollar play across the board, like uh, not the greatest, but like well, you know, pretty good. I think he you won have one it last week somewhere. He, well, he yeah, he got second in like some seniors event. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. not even it was like it was like four it was like months ago, right? I think I don't even know, but no, nonetheless, you have one site that's projecting him at seven percent ownership, another one at four, another one at six. And another one has him at 25% ownership. Okay. Right. And I, I'm just, my, my head is just kind of spinning from this whole thing. I'm just probably going to X him, but, but I just figured that, that I, I would just mention, I have no idea what that's all about. Um, but that's, that's the Patrick Harrington saga of the week. The guy that the, the two, the guy I like, I mentioned Will Gordon. Um, again, you could play like a bunch of seven Ks. Um, the, the one I'm having, that shows up at the top for me is believe it or not hated Buckley. Um, and that, that doesn't do anything for me because he's like 16% owned. So, right. so, so the one I'll give you for like the, you know, the, 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 the low, the lower owned who do like under set under AK with whatever under 10%, that'll be Ryan Palmer. Okay. Nothing, no reason just that he's rich just as well as some of these others and I have him at under 10%. Um, I'm with you. Well, I had Palmer on my list. Nice, nice, yeah. and then and that's the thing. I mean, listen, people are going to play. If, here's the thing: if Sanjay M is going to be forty percent owned at ten seven, that means that these seven Ks are all going to get played. Okay, yeah. um, so I guess I mean, if you really wanted to be fun, is you you would just play eight K guys. <laughs> right. uh, I, think which, I really do. Yeah, I think who, that. Who, actually, who do you like in seven Ks? I think that's going to be a, a pretty common build in the. Uh, in the single entries more than the okay. large stuff, you know, a lot of, I, I do think you'll see a lot of, a lot of that 8k stuff because, you know, people know they don't necessarily need the winner. Um, uh, I, I, there's a couple guys I wanted to talk about here because I think that they, they're being like, it, it's like, like if Davis Riley was 8,900, it wouldn't, I wouldn't bat an eye at it. I understand that Webb Simpson, there's, you know, probably withdrawal possibilities. There's probably, there's a lot of worry that goes with him. But the fact that you can get Webb Simpson as what, like the 70th highest priced golfer on the slate, on a slate where he's probably the best golfer historically of anybody on the slate, and maybe maybe you could argue against Sungjae, I guess. Um, but I I think I might have to take a shot on a guy like that. Like, are we going to be shocked if Webb Simpson wins this tournament by five strokes? I, I wouldn't be. Like, it's yes, it's a high risk play, but you're talking about no ownership on a guy at 7,300, and I understand he's he's this is not like recent, this is not the old Webb Simpson, but. I just don't believe all that stuff just completely goes away. And this is the kind of course I think that he could actually play really well. You mentioned about the hazards and things like that. He's a pretty good golfer at controlling those shots. So I, I just feel like I'm, I'm going to take some shots there. I'm going to play some Davis Riley because I believe in the talent. Um, but those are mostly, I didn't have as many guys between 7K and 7,500. And unfortunately, now that is the field, but those were my two lower on ones along with the Ryan Palmer that you mentioned. Um, I'm going to throw out, I'm going to throw out a conspiracy theory. Go ahead. Uh, 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 again, this is uh, uh, fortunately not that many people watch our stuff, so not going to give me that much trouble. But I, I, I'm of the opinion. I mean, again, I've been watching these these companies make like projections like for quite some time now. This is going to sound kind of weird, but but if Davis Riley was priced instead of seventy four hundred, like you mentioned, if he was priced at like ninety seven hundred. I think they would project him like a 9,700. I, I, I really do. How about I, this? I'll, I'll do you one better. He'd also be twice as much owned. 
I really, I really believe that like right now he's being priced like, right. He's being priced at, uh, excuse me, projected at say 51 fantasy points and Brandon Wu at 7,300 right alongside him is being priced also at 51 fantasy points is across the industry. I'll bet you that if he was priced at 9,700, he would be projected like the same fantasy points as Min Woo Lee. Like for example, I, I again, the, I can't prove it. Right. <laughs> no, no, I, I feel you. I don't disagree with you on this, by the way. But, but, but like you said, like if he came out at 9,400, I would not even think twice like Davis right. Riley. Right. And, and, and Webb Simpson, how many times in the last couple of years, Webb Simpson has been like 10K. You know what I mean? Like, Webb like 10K, well, 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 obviously, well, obviously it makes sense. He's 10K because the field's weak. Okay. Well, this is one of them. You know what I mean? Right. Like, so I, I, I would love one day. I, 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 I want to challenge. This is what I want to challenge. I want to challenge the all the projection models I follow. We can do this for all sports if you want. I want the projections out before the Saturdays. That's what I want. Okay. Yeah. That's you know what? That's actually totally <laughs> fair. I love that idea. Put them out now. It's hard, but 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 that actually shouldn't be so hard. Put it. Shouldn't put, be put any them different. Out. Put them out before the salary. NBA is difficult because by the time you know who's playing, then oh probably. yeah, that's that's impossible. But but, yeah. but but you know who's playing the golf before the salaries come out. I'm with you, yeah. man. I I, I, let's, I let, let's see let's let's see what the projections look like. You know what I mean? Like before, if, if they come out before the salaries. How about um the, the one other guy I'm going to mention just because he he blew up our lineups. He was one of your low guys that I liked, but he and he ended up I think last in the tournament last week. But I still like him as a as a golfer. It's Aaron. Yeah, what about Caleb Tarim a little bit? Why not? Yeah, why not? Why not? Hey, you know what? I cashed in the eight. If you say that he robbed you, I cashed in the eight eighty eight with him in my lineup. <laughs> so he, he, he didn't rob me. He got last. <laughs> he got last. He didn't no sweat at all. That's it. Exactly. The Taylor Montgomery. He missed the he missed the cup by by one stroke. By the one, I know. And he was the weirdest one too because he. You'd look at him. He was plus three. Then he'd be yeah. minus two. Then he'd be my, Then he'd be plus four. Then he'd be back to even. I'm like, what the hell is going on with this guy? Yeah. Um. <laughs> all right. Down in the six Ks. I'm gonna guess off the top of my head that you don't have a lot of guys um you would be correct um you have <laughs> i have i have i guess my, my top rated 7k guy underneath uh, underneath 7k is rated 44th which is not it's 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 i usually have a guy in the 30s um yeah. just, just saying um and that guy would be uh eric with a k barnes eric no, I, with a k but barnes. that's okay. That, that's who Eric with a K Barnes. Uh, and then the other guy that people have actually heard of is, is Tyler Duncan. So those are the, those are the two guys I have on my border under seven K. I've heard, I, I got you with those guys. So I, I, I'll, 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 I'm going to mix those guys in. Cause I, I do believe one of the things I like to do is to try to force these guys in. Cause it's just every time, every winning lineup has one of these weird guys in it, that wins the yep. big ones, especially in the, in the lottery. Uh, I've heard, and, and he's projecting well, and I've heard this from a couple of people that I know and I, a couple of shows that oh, I watch. Wait, I, I think I know who you're going to say. Or maybe not. Go ahead. Maybe Eric Cole? No, yeah. Eric with a C Cole. But yeah. Eric with a C Cole, I'll pair with Eric with a K Barnes. How about Eric that? Is, Eric with a C Cole, he's my, he's like, is he the next one of mine? No, there's Kevin Tway first. Yeah. And then Eric with a C Cole. Yep. But but if you I'm I'm a, I'll I'll give you one more when we, when we get to the game because it's like the greatest name of all time. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll give you one more when we get to the game. Okay, sounds good. I've got those guys on my list. I do want to find some of this. I think Tyler Duncan is actually a reasonable idea. Um, once you get past the top of the six K ranges, it gets really grim. Yeah. Um, like it's because because those guys at the top. I mean, I can't find anything down at like 63, 65 that I can even talk myself into. Um, uh, I, I heard one show mention Brent Grant. I, I don't know much about that. I mean, I guess you could play Bryce Garnett if you had to. Bryce Garnett or Bryce Garnett or what about the, well, the one that I was going to mention who's, a you know, historically been a pretty decent cut maker is Norlander, who's who's down there at 65. I thought you were going to say Sabatini. Okay. I didn't even see Sabatini on here. Did I? I forgot. 6,200. I have at 0.27% ownership. Right? Okay. That, that, that I can talk myself into. Absolutely. Okay. We've, <laughs> um, heard, we've heard of him at least. Yeah. And he, and he plays this the way I want to see everybody play. Huge swings all over right, the place. Right, Eagles right. here, double bogeys. We'll, we'll take everything. It doesn't matter. Right. Um, yeah. So, okay. I can, I can get behind the Sabatini, Kevin Tway, uh, the Tway thing. Uh, Norlander. Norlander is actually a guy I could I could talk myself into at, at zero ownership at sixty five hundred. I just need to look further and make sure that he's like not going to withdraw from this tournament like right after. Right. 
Right. Um, but yeah, but I, so I'm, I'm going to try to force those guys in anyway. I've got a list of about 20 guys right now. Yeah. So that, that's, that's, you know, narrowed down a little bit. Now we get to play the game of, of who wins yes. the tournament. All right. So who's going to win the tournament? Um, uh, that is a good question, isn't it? All right. I, boy, oh boy. Can I do this? Can this guy actually win? I'm gonna try it. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna close my eyes and say Danny McCarthy somehow wins the tournament. Yeah, that's exactly who I was gonna say. So oh my god! <laughs> little, little, little bonus to Danny McCarthy on that one. Okay. Um, okay. Now I gotta think of another one. I didn't. I, I wasn't sure you were gonna take him. I thought you might, but yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and well, I'm I'm gonna say uh, I'm a little worried about wise with some of the some, like we mentioned with the water. So that was that was gonna be my my other one. I think I'm still gonna say Aaron Wise, yeah. um, but I don't feel as much conviction as I do about the uh, McCarthy play. All right, under under nine k to finish top five. Under nine k for top five. I'll and, let you go first this time. Yeah, I'm looking for my. I'm going to, I'm going to, to, I'm going to say that my, well, I'll take the obvious one first. Johnny Vegas is the one I'll take. Yep. Uh, that's fair enough. And I'm, not I'm, not I'm, I was going to take him if you, you weren't going to, and I will, I will, I will, I will homage it out to, uh, to, to Mr. Rick and I will say JT Poston. All right. There you go. All right. Under 8K. To get top 10. Top 10. No, no. Under 8K to get, Wait, it was win the tournament. Oh, because we didn't go on. Oh, we did under 10K to get top five, under 9K to go top 10. Oh, we didn't, we didn't do that. Yeah. The, so, so, so we'll call those guys our under 9K ones then. Or, or under 8K. So pick. we can pick one more guy in the 8K range, I guess, is, to, is the next thing to do. <laughs> That's probably the best way to do it. Right, because we, we picked 8K guys to come in top five, right? Is that right, what we did? right. Okay. All right, who you got? Then I will go with, uh, with the aforementioned Adam Mirog. You're going with me. Oh, no, I'm not doing that. No, sorry. Sorry. I can't. I can't. I got to go with my guy. I'll go with Cameron Davis. Okay. Cam Davis. Um, and I, I'm going to take Sepp Straka. Excellent. So now under 8K to get top 20. Under 8K to top 20. Uh, for me, it's uh, Steven Yeager. I will go with, uh, with Will Gordon. That's who my other one would be. So perfect. Okay. Um, under 7K to make the cut. Okay. Um, okay. To make the cut. <laughs> Even after talking through all those guys, I still don't feel great about any of them. Ugh. I guess that I'm I'm gonna go because I know more about like I feel like better about making the cut. I'm gonna say take your guy Tyler Duncan. I'm gonna go. I mean the actual answer is is well, I, I don't want I don't want to ruin ruin the system. Um, All right, you do that. You just said it sometimes. It still doesn't. No, I'm gonna I am gonna go with Eric, Eric with a K Barnes, but I just want to throw another guy just just because the name is the coolest name ever. Now yeah. I have to play with one line. If I say it, I have to play one lineup with him. That's the problem. Absolutely. Okay. How about Pearson Cootie? Pearson Cootie. How do you spell the last name? Even? With a C. <laughs> Pearson Cootie. See how? How you Cootie C O O C. C O O D Y at six, oh. and, he, and he's expensive. He's sixty eight hundred. He's not like he's like six thousand. He's like wow. He's That's like nice. more than like Ryan Moore. You know what I mean? Like he's actually like he's more than Ryan Armor. You know what I mean? Like, like Pearson who actually play golf. There's more than guys that actually play golf. He's yeah. more than Doc Redman. He's more than Hank Laboida. He's more than Cameron Piercy. He is Pearson Cootie. <laughs> All right, I'll go with it. I'll I'll just give one shout out to another guy lower in the rat range. I'm I'm gonna say like at some point Doc Redman isn't gonna be this horrible, and this is a weak enough field where maybe he plays well. So throw him as a bonus. Section. So the cool thing is is that if you if you play the guys that we just mentioned and you put, but play lineups out, you're gonna be leaving like 7,400 on the table. I think. So, so and I think this is a week where you really don't have to worry about spending your money. I agree. I, I really totally don't. Agree. All right. Well, this is be fun, guys. Looking forward to it tomorrow. I will post my early builds and my core plays hey, later on. I have an idea for what they're going to be. Um, and uh, let's make some money. Let's keep the, the good golf stuff going. I think I think the whole team's been having had, had a good golf week. So let's let's keep it going. Good luck, Sounds everybody. Good.